Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third day of Open Source Bridge, and this is your opportunity to stretch your legs a little at the end. In the meantime, we will be showing you Scottish folk dancing, so if that's what you are here for, we found the right place. Obviously. And do not stay anywhere. <laughs> back 
Now, the, note that the, the symmetry of that figure in that we do something and we cross over to our partner's side and then we do the same thing again to get back. There's a lot of, of do something and then sort of unwind it in Scottish country dancing. I mean, you know, I, I, I realize that the cynics in the back row, the cynics in the back row can say, well, gee, you can just optimize this whole thing and just say, well, just stand there for 32 bars. But that's not terribly interesting. <laughs> so the next figure involves the couple at the top, where the top is where the music is, dancing down for four bars and leading back to the top. Again, doing something and you've got to get them back to, roughly back to proper formation. Let's see, after that. After that, uh, the ones cast to second place. And that's, and they circle, they circle with the third couple. Note, however, that this is not one of those figures where you go immediately go and undo the thing you just did. And the dance ends with the first, the, the second and first couple dancing rights and lefts at the top. So, so this, is, this is one of the simpler dances in Scottish country dancing. It's been around since the 1700s, which means they've had 300 years to kick all the bugs out. But uh, one thing that really makes a dance nice is a built-in error recovery. There's a, there's a certain phrasing and tempo that goes with these dances where you'll do the better ones I've found do something that's higher energy and quick, and then they immediately follow it with something that's kind of slow and kind of simple so that if something funny happens, you have a few bars where you can kind of fudge it a little bit and get back to where, you, where the dance is supposed to be. Also, um, you might notice that we didn't really do anything the fourth couple down here, and the, and the, the structure of many a Scottish country dance involves a progression where the first couple starts up at the top, and they do the whole dance, and the dance is cleverly devised so that they end up in second place. You know, however, since the fourth couple hasn't done anything, they're now ready to do something or they're asleep. So, after the dance runs all the way through, first couple starts the dance again from second place, and this time it's first couple who stands out, and the third couple finally gets to do something. Anyway, so that, that was a quick overview of, of uh, the white cockade, and you might notice that that, that was a nice lively tempo for that dance. It's fun, it's energetic, it gets the blood flowing. However, there's also a second, more elegant form of dance called a Strauss Bay. A Strauss Bay is slower, and it's a good way to show off footwork and other dance figures if you if you can do them well. It took me quite a while to get actually get all the get most of the bugs out of the footwork. So if the dancers could get in position for Sandy Scratch Broth. show you that next.
I hope you enjoyed that one. That was a, that was the Strasse and real and real Stanley Scotchbroth. I think it's actually written as just the Strasse, but we like to change and modify dances. Like yes, like you like we do with code. Pick up something and say, well, you know, this would be a lot better if something changed. So why don't we go and modify it a little bit and spread it around and see what happens. So. It's also an interesting comparison because Strauss Space and Quick Time Dances have different footwork, but because we basically just said we'll do it three more times, but in a different tempo, the, you may have noticed that some of the footwork changed. Like for, for example, for example, the settings, you might have noticed in Strauss paper, the setting steps started off with a nice lunge like this. I draw something that nice lunge you have all the proper equipment installed. That's one of the favorite, one of my favorite parts of Scott's face because it it conveys, at least to me, a sense of passion and excitement. But it's also really nice to look at if you can get a whole set of people really doing it well. This this face is a little bit cramped and we would like to have a little bit more work we might have noticed this when I tore out the first three rows of chairs. But, uh, yeah, I, I, so I hope you enjoyed the comparison between the two hands first. So, another thing, uh, a parallel that I would like to draw between Scottish, sorry, a parallel that I would like to draw between Scottish country dancing and programming computers, it has to do with the collaborative aspect of Scottish country dance. Uh, you could all get in, in position for the dance tabellina. Uh, as you can clearly see, Scottish dancing is a group activity, and as a, as arranged, people usually dance in couples. There's usually a man on one side and a woman on the other side. <laughs> and and well, it's actually not quite like the lead and follow that you see in ballroom dancing because when I when I do ballroom dancing, it's a lot of work as the lead to figure out what am I going to do next? How do I convey this to my partner? Who can I crash into? <laughs> and how do I avoid bad stuff while making our making ourselves look good, or at least have a good time. With uh, Scottish country dances, the, there's a bit more choreography involved, which is really nice if you were like me, who 10 years ago was a complete dance beginner, and you knew absolutely nothing. And if you gave me a quiz right now about what's first position, I still don't know. But uh, the th one of the things that I've learned over the last 10 years is just how much Scottish country dancing really is a group activity because if you get a bunch of dancers together, they, it's actually quite easy for you, for beginners to pick up the dances because the other dancers will help you remember where you're supposed to be. There are little cues like you might notice, like when we do this, when we circle around with each other, hands go up as a sort of visual cue. So if you're on one side, you can usually see the same thing happening on the other side. And that's, that's your cue for, oh, okay, I should be doing this. There are a few dances where a few figures happen and you can't quite rely on that, but that's an advanced topic. So, Tamalina, sorry, Tamalina is a reel for five couples. It starts with the first and third couples leading down and up back to second and fourth places as the second and fourth couples step up. And once they, once first and third couples reach second and fourth position, all the hands go up, like I just was talking about. And now everybody dances a figure in, known as double triangles, which involves the setting step, which is the bouncy thing. And the couples in the middle flip around, 
And finally, they end that in the middle on their own sides with their hands joined. Now, the next figure is one that shows up in a lot of country, Scottish country dances. We seem to like doing figures of eight, making a nice paper or track around the floor. So, first and third couples dance up between the couple that's above them, around the back, then they meet in the middle and join hands and then they dance around that lower couple and back into place. And finally, because we don't want to end the dance with some people stuck in the same place they've been, uh, the bottom four couples dance a poussette, which is a fancy French term, that shuffles them all around and so, so that they are ready for the next iteration of the dance. As one gets uh, more advanced in Scottish country dancing, they start talking more about being a good Scottish country dance citizen. And one thing that teachers have been hammering into me a lot lately is to make good eye contact with everybody else and to have strong, strong hands. I mean, this doesn't mean that you're like, you know, trying to shift a truck transmission or something, but, <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I found that really makes dances look is firm support. It, 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 if you've ever done swing dancing, it's exactly the thing that the swing teachers keep harping on, which is you have to maintain a good, solid box so that if you're the lead, you can communicate minute movements easily, and if you're the follow, then you can receive those movements, and so you don't just end up into each other. So now that I've shown you what Tomalina looks like at the slow speed, how about we do it for real?
Well, wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> okay. yeah. So, I want to talk a little bit about the process of how dances get written because they didn't just spring forth from somebody's head fully formed, nor did they come out of the sea foam. Scottish country dancing, or writing them actually, is in a way it's a lot like writing computer programs in open source communities. First, you've got to generally come up with a sketch of what you want to do. And once that's done, then comes the interesting process of iterating through that design and actually putting words on paper. That, uh, it can, that can take a little while because not only do you have to choreograph what you want the dancers to do, it also helps a lot for general acceptability if you put in some error handling. Thing that none of us ever do, at least not the first time through. And once you do that, okay, you know it, it helps that there are also some there are also people within the Scottish country dance community, such as the teachers. There's several of them here today, who uh, you can run dances by, and they will give you feedback, much like re much like reviewing patches on GitHub. So. Uh, Usually, usually you go a few rounds with the teachers. I give you some suggestions, kind of work things out, and then comes time to actually try it. This is an interesting and scary part because you show up and you're really nervous and you have no idea if this thing is really going to work. I mean, it worked on the simulator, so it should be fine, right? <laughs> well, sometimes it goes okay, sometimes it doesn't. The nice thing about having humans to test on is that they can give you feedback because they have the intelligence, whereas the computer gives you a crash dump and sometimes it just melts. Or not, I mean, I don't know, I work with operating systems, so it's actually, I've had a few cases where you wrote the wrong software and the system got hot and then other bad, then I let the magic smoke out. <laughs> so, so, uh, so let's, once you've tested the dance around maybe some friends or maybe the local Scottish dance community, there's also there's actually steps you can take past that. Uh, there's a uh, there's an organization in Scotland called the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society, and they maintain a database of dances, and you can you can submit your dance suggestion idea to the RSCDS. And periodically, they publish booklets full of dances that they've received. Now, there's a, apparently a fairly lengthy review process where they actually send out your dance to other Scottish country dance groups around the world and have them try it. And so this this seems to have it have the effect of giving you a lot of eyeballs to look through your dance and tell you if things are, what things go well, what transitions work, what transitions are kind of awkward. <coughs> I don't know. I suspect that the larger group you get, the probably the less feedback you get, but I haven't actually been through that process yet. But uh, the end result is kind of like submitting code and getting it upstream. If enough branches, or it, if your dance proves popular enough, then it can get included in the booklet. And now the RSCDS has published your dance and it's an official dance. From there, uh, much like upstream code like Linux and things like that, people around the world can download it and they have at least a fairly good idea that it will probably work with their group. But uh, as, we, as I mentioned with Scott, Sandy Scotchbroth, sometimes we local branches like to take answers we find and modify them slightly to suit our needs. And sometimes they get published, sometimes they don't. There's not quite as strong a legal guarantee that like, like you get with the GPL, but if, if you make contributions, you have to share them back. And fundamentally, it's a, at the end of the day, this is a way to have fun, so why wouldn't you? But uh, that, is, that is kind of a difference between the two communities. Anyway, so the fourth dance that we'd like to do for you today is called the Piper and the Penguin. This one is radically different from the ones that I that you have seen, in that it is danced in a square set. Would you mind getting in, in, getting 
okay, set up for the Penguin, the Penguin. Like most of the dances we've done, this one is also done in quick time. However, it is done in the square formation where the couple, way at the top is still first couple. The Maureen and the empty hole where I will be standing in a minute is second couple. Uh, Tom and Janice down here are third couple, and Maggie and Liza are fourth couple. So instead of instead of having a straight line, we're basically wrapping around in a circle and doing things.
in, in Massachusetts, there's a uh, mountain called the Loon Mountain, and uh, they have the Highland Games there every year. Uh, but this takes shows the Loon Pond, the waves on the pond, loons flying, and diving and surfacing again. So it begins with the Okay, it says all four couples circling around it and back. Let's kind of fake it with the left and have everybody eight hands to the left, or ten hands around to the left. Yeah, they were all twelve hands. So you're gonna go eight slip steps, then step close, step close, step close, step close, and back to place. There's your pond. Everybody. Join hands on the sides, advance towards your partner for two steps, retire for two, and do it again, advance and retire. Now, first couple, the top here, you're going to turn with the right hand. Oh, 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 sorry. Yes, I got ahead of myself. Okay, the first two couples, Second two couples, third two couples. Right hands across in a wheel and back again. Here you're flying and back with the left hand. <laughs> Thank you, Liza. <laughs> now, first couple turns with the right hand. And everybody else makes an arch. And you're going to dance all the way to the bottom and everybody's going to step up to make room for them the bottom. So these just move on and up and the whole thing starts over again. So it's, we'll walk it one more time. Circle around and back. And then the, um, advance and retire. Yeah, you're making the waves. And now you're flying right hands across the yeah, top two, bottom two, and, and those in the middle, and back. And that's four, that's four bars of music each way. And then the ones turn with the right hand, and dash to the bottom as everybody else makes the arch and steps up. Well, you, you drop it, actually drop hands and, and step is, is the way it's written, however, it might be easier just to keep the hands <laughs> And, you know, if you got tall people going under, fake the arches, especially those that are shorter ones. <laughs> okay, so the Loon Mountain Reel. Circle, advance, retire twice, right hands across, back with the left. Turn at the top and under the arches and surface at the other end. Step up, circle. 